Hello and welcome to Zilfil Trainers. My name is Shadab. In today's class, we'll be trying to solve this given model of G plus uh, 4 by using a link element. So let me just turn off the extrude view for a second and let me explain to you what is the problem over here. So if you see here, if you see the gap over here, you can see this is our beam, this is our beam, this is our slab and this is our column. Okay. So what is happening is there is a gap here between these uh, elements because of which the load transfer is not taking place properly. Okay, now this is a very common condition that you can see in many projects where in which if I had to just take you to a side video of ours, this is our running project right now and you can see here, uh, this is our column, this is our beam and this is our slab. Okay, so what is basically happening here is there is a certain amount of eccentricity between the beam and our column element. Okay, so I'll be showing you how you can bridge that, uh, you know, gap between the beam and column element by using a link element. Okay, so how we can uh, create the link and how the link behaves and how the link works is what we'll be discussing in today's class. Okay, with that being said, I'll come, I'll take you back to a 2D frame. First, we'll discuss about the link element in a 2D frame and then I'll definitely take you over here and I'll show it to you how you can uh, do the same in the, uh, for a given project of yours. All right. So we have a simple 2D frame. Uh, if you just see the beam property, it is 230 cross 300 for both of the beams. I'll just show it to you. And we have the same thing for the column that is 300 cross 400 for the column. And you can see that we're getting 300 cross 400 for the column as well. Now, the problem here is that, uh, here the beam is sitting on the column properly and here what we have, we have a gap between the beam and column as I have shown you here, it looks something like this. Okay, this is the condition on the side. In the side what basically happens is, if you have a column that looks something like this and if you have a beam that is coming and sitting on the edge of the column like this, I just move it in a little bit, no problem, even if it, if it is like this, no problem. Okay, sometimes you have beam sitting like this also, sometimes it is sitting like this and sometimes it is sitting like this, okay. So if it is sitting like this, what basically ends up happening is that column centroid is somewhere over here and the beam centroid is somewhere over here. Now, if I, I show in the extrude view, as I have shown you here, in the extrude view, everything looks fine. Okay, in the extrude view, everything looks fine. You can, you can see here that the beam is coming and setting and everything. But our ETABS, ETABS is basically what? It's a line model. We create line models in ETABS. So the load transfer should be done properly. Okay, you cannot just give a gap like this and be like, no, no, it is like this on the side. That is not the right way to do it. Okay, so this gap has to be bridged by something and then bridging the gap is done by what? It is done by our link element like this. Okay, we will bridge this gap by using a link element. So if you come to the project over here, as I have shown you, there's a gap over here. So let me just run the analysis and show you what happens. Basically, we'll get a warning here stating that the, there is an Ill, Ill condition because the load of the beam is not being able to transfer to the column. So we'll get a warning regarding that. As I said, see, we get a warning regarding that about the real condition and everything. Let me just close this and let me take you to the bending moment and shear force diagrams. Okay. That is how the, we check the behavior of a given element, right? So if you come and see here, we have a normal, uh, you know, uh, behavior of our beam for the, uh, for the normal 2D frame without any gap. We are getting minus 7.67 Kn of our moments and we are getting minus 17.65 Kn of our shear. Very simple and very straightforward we are getting. Here what happens is we are getting something like minus 5,610 Kn of our moments same thing for sure also now this is basically the same uh, idea of you know uh, if you put a wrong input you get a wrong output garbage, garbage and garbage all issue is uh, you can see here the simple reason for this is because there is a gap over here okay if you model everything correctly okay if you model everything correctly you get a very good answer for this but because we have done a mistake in our modeling that is basically we have given a gap over here and uh, <clears throat> because of which we are getting results like this okay so how do we fix this simple and straightforward answer is link element so we just unlock the model and gee, generally what you can do, you can either, you can either extend the beam, this, this beam you can extend over here. Okay. Complete it till here. You can extend or what you can, you can move the columns inwards like this for making the analysis simple. You can do all that, but if you don't want to do it, you want it to be exactly like the way it is on the site, the same condition you want to recreate in your ETABS model. That time what you can do is you can go to assign, you can go to link element and you can go for link properties. Okay. Assign link and link properties. Please make note of this uh, path link properties. You can go then click on modify by show definition. Click on modify by show property in this, make sure initially it not be like this. It will be just like this. Only you will be selected. Your job is to select everything. Okay. That is basically you're fixing the movement in X, Y in the direction and you're fixing the rotation in R1, R2 and R3 direction. Okay. So there's no rotation allowed. There is no movement allowed. That means it is a very fixed joint. All right. So click on okay, click on okay, and then close it like this. Okay. Please don't directly close the dialog boxes. It will not do the change. Please uh, close it properly. Let me show you again, assign link link properties, modify bar show, modify bar show property, make sure everything is fixed, then click OK and close the dialog box, click OK and close the dialog box, and you can click OK and you can close the dialog box, no problem. So once you have once you have defined the link element, okay, you have to draw it. To draw it, you can go for the drawing options over here and just very carefully, just draw it from this grid point, this, this point to this point, joint point to joint point, okay. If you're not able to select the joint point, just 
come out of the command if i go right click and go for snap options make sure the joint option is turned on okay this will help you to select the joints properly then you come over here again you do the same thing just take it from the column and go all the way to the beam end just a second joint point let's do it once more let's take the link element and go all the way over here okay like this you have to create a path so once you have created the path by using a link element let's rerun the analysis and see how the bending movement and shear force diagrams will vary now this will take some time in the meanwhile what i'll do i'll just take you to our courses it have safe and rcdc if you're interested in learning from us you can just come and check out our courses over here generally people will teach you rcdc and everything but they won't show you how to create submission drawings by using rcdc drawings so for that i have taken a, a, a iit project and i have taken a g plus for iit project and i have shown you how to create those complete submission drawings and everything in autocad okay so you can just come and check out the content if you're interested in learning from us and uh, there is not just one or two projects you can just see here so many softwares are there i'm giving you even status on as bonus and if you just come down nearly 40 hours of content is uh, covered in this okay so let me just stop over here and come back to the project at hand so again we'll get warnings like this real condition warning just click on done and come over here and uh, not there sfd bmw diagrams click on apply and when you click on apply you can see the kind of behavior we are getting okay so you can see here the behavior is almost identical now but the one with the rigid element we have a little higher amount of uh, moments and little higher amount of shear we have simple reason for that is because we have some offset over here okay always we will have some offset when we do a normal beam column you can see here we have given some amount of offset over here for ourselves and that's how we get the values here that offset is not there here we are getting the complete start to finish uh, thing all right so you're getting something like minus 12 um, 12 kilo meter of our uh, uh, bending moment minus 12 and here we have something like minus 7 okay so hardly 4 to 5 kilo meter worth of difference you're seeing here and same thing about shear shear is minus 17 and here if you see the shear is how much shear is minus 20 again hardly little bit of difference is there from this to that version so if you want to draw the link element and create a very identical condition to the site something that looks like this where did you go yeah something that looks like this you can definitely go for link element and create the links no no problem regarding that but just be careful don't create too many links blindly okay if it is too small if you see generally when i was even uh, designing this project what i had done is i just moved the core beam over here and just done the work that i had to do i didn't create a link element for that because when you create link elements it'll take some extra amount of time for you to run the analysis and if you have way too many link elements it gives you an ill condition warning that basically means that you're not getting a proper output for your input okay so one or two places it is well and fine but if you want to do it for the start to finish everywhere on every floor i would request you to just move the column a little bit so that this minor variation is not a big deal okay so you can just work out on it and you can uh, do your work all right now coming to the project that we have over here now i want to create a link element over here so what do i do i go to assign first let me show you how it behaves okay let me just show you how it behaves first then we can go and create a link element and we'll see how the behavior is varying then okay so you can see the slab is almost falling down and uh, if i show you the sfd and bnb diagrams for this it will be something like a yeah it will be something like a triangle shape like this okay so in the front we are barely getting any moments but in the back end we can see so much amount of shear force and everything uh, bending moments we are getting over here moments so i have to fix this so how do i fix this just unlock the model either move the column inwards or extend the beam or third option is link elements so go to assign go to links go to link properties please make note of this thing link properties click on modify or show click on modify by show properties and make sure everything is fixed okay if you want to change the name you can change the name also okay you can just give a link uh, uh, rigid something you can name it like this no problem okay this is for your reference click on okay click on uh apply. just click on okay now i have to assign this so you can just come over here to the link element just make sure that uh, link rigid whatever you have done you have that link rigid over here and just go ahead and just just right click over here zoom in go from the joint point to the joint point okay just go to the joint point to the joint point same thing you have to do here to go from this joint to this joint you can go and you can just create a bridge like that once you have created that let me rerun the analysis and let me show you how the sfd and bmb diagrams will vary okay so the first thing you can see the slab is no longer falling down the way it was in the previous iteration and let me just click on the apply and click on okay and you can see very good we are getting uh, sfds and bmds and everything for our project so like this you can create the sfds in uh, rigid elements and try to save your project if you want all right so that's all for this class see you guys in the next class thank you and if you're interested you can please come and check out our content over here there's a thousand rupees off coupon code i think it expires in a day or two so if you just click over here the apply coupon you can apply the coupon over here it becomes a thousand rupees course then 
okay so apply thousand rupees off you can just come in check out the content if you're interested in learning from us all right so that's all this class see you guys in the next class thank you